اشهد لا اله الا الله ان الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا اللهم ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمني يا رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد وأصلي وأسلم على مبعوث رحمة العالمين سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه وعنا معهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most compassionate, the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he who is guided by the will of Allah no one can misguide him and he who is misguided no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger respected brothers and sisters in Islam today's khutbah with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is about why faith is important the reason why I decided to talk, it happened with me, like I think, if not all of you, most of you, we are part of WhatsApp groups. So in two different groups, within less, less than 48 hours, the two points that I will highlight, you know, were discussed. One point in one of the groups, there was a discussion about one of the brothers, Jazakumullah Khair, who lives here in this country, many years and it happened that he taught as a teacher of religious studies in many Islamic schools. So he came up, he raised the following question. He said, I noticed that our kids, especially those who were born in this country, after many years of living with the full package of environment, their biggest concern in viewing, judging, looking, whatever at anything will be what is so-called human understanding and general human ethics and not faith or aqidah. <laughs> Which means, okay, I don't think so. From ethical point of view, I don't see it a problem, regardless what Sharia or Allah says. This is his observation. This, is, this was a point of discussion. In another group, it happened that the following point was raised as well, which is, there was a discussion between some of the scholars. They were commenting on a person who brought into his social media platform the following image. The image contained sisters with hijab, and sisters without hijab, all of them, they were Muslims. And he wrote under this image, he said in Arabic, We have no idea which one of them is closer to Allah, which is true. But it brought to my mind an amazing misconception that already has happened with some, or a possible misconception to be planted in the mind of the people, which is similar to the phrase that is attributed to Ali ibn Abi Talib when he said, Kalimatu haqqin yuradu biha batil, which is from one angle that's true. Yes, we don't know who's closer. The hijab is not the final, definite, ultimate indication that this is a believer and unbeliever. Definitely, yes, yes, yes. But the package is much more bigger than that. Because of that, I decided to talk about what faith 
is and why faith is important and to put things in the right place with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the coming few say 14 or 15 minutes now the first idea we do always claim in a scientific language that faith is the most important Iman is the most important Tawheed for us is the pillar that is true why the question is why why not ethics are the most important why not the you know to love others the most important regardless your faith is your private affairs between you and your lord uh oh who said so this is what we've been taught but it does not mean necessarily that's true <laughs> part of the job of someone like me to fix misconceptions or to re-put things in the right order because sometimes, sometimes we might be exposed to a systematic brainwashing without even you yourself realize that. <laughs> so let's put things in the right order. Now, <clears throat> I believe personally that most of those people who claim that, please, your faith is in your heart. Keep it for you. Okay? Let's judge the people according to their ethics, according to their humanity, whatever. I said, in reality, 99% of their lives contradict with what they claim because they do apply what they claim that they don't want to apply. But in everything in their life, except religion. <laughs> and my role to bring you the evidences about the amazing contradictions in the way of thinking and the application on the ground. And this is my job now in the coming few minutes. Now, I personally believe, and I will prove it to you, that the biggest motivation for any person on earth to do something is faith, not ethics or a human attitude or whatever. It's faith. What is faith? When we use the word faith, we are talking about Iman. When we use the word belief or to believe, we are talking about I'tiqad. Okay? What is Iman and I'tiqad? Let's just highlight in a very... The word I'taqad in Arabic, you know, it's when you... The concept of when we say Al-Uqdah. When you tie it, for example, a rope. When you put the rope in this way and you just tight it, it's called in Arabic Uqda. <laughs> okay? Now, why we use the word Aqida from the origin of Uqda? Now, Al Uqda, it's very tight and it's, you know, very solid and it cannot be released easily. It is Uqda, okay? Which means when you do it, when you have I'tiqad, which means this idea has been fixed into inside yourself like the Uqda. It's not a something just superficial that comes it's not something that can, no 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 it's like the uqda let's just say i'tiqad aqida it's there it's closed it's very tight it's wrapped it's there okay this is the the part of the meaning of the linguistic origin now many people they keep saying the most important things are ethics and to look from a human point of view my question is who can claim on earth that we can agree from a human point of view about what ethics are? Because ethics and the human understanding are very relative. What you might think is right, I might think is what? Wrong. What I might think that it's true, you might think it's what? Bad or wrong. And I will prove it to you that if we do not have an extra external umbrella that judges us and all of us. We abide to it, we will have differentiations, no criteria. Example, human example, historical example. When the USA in 1940-something decided to bomb Hiroshima and Nagasaki in what they called the Second World War, they bombed them with the atomic bomb. 
Imagine if you went to interview millions of Americans on top of them, the politicians. Have you done something wrong? What could be the answer, do you think? No. Definitely no. But why? We are defending the international community. So? But you kill them. But I'm not discussing killing. I'm discussing we are... Sheikh Abu... We are discussing, like yours, yours. <clears throat> we are defending the international community, but you kill, no, 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 no. From your point of view, you are talking as we killed. No, 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 we are defending the world from the Japanese. Who can push them to believe otherwise? Type another example. Nazis in Germany, Second World War, when they were invading Europe, don't you think they were have a faith in something? They believed in what? The superiority, not of the Europeans, no, 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 of the Aryans. They believed they are superior to other Europeans as well. So they were, they look justified to them, occupying Europe and killing thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Try to imagine, go back and ask Mr. Hitler, or ask the Nazis, do you think you are doing something wrong ethically? What do you think the answer could be? Definitely no. But who's right and who's wrong? They believe in the superiority of the Aryans. So, we are better. So therefore, they were killing their fellow Europeans. And, you know, if I stayed up to the morning to tell you ethically, do you think Nazis have the right to kill others? You say no. They would say what? Yes, who's right and who's wrong? I'm giving you an example about relativism and ethics. When you say, no, 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 no. We, we, we must share ethics. Ethics, they can't come without precondition, which is faith. <laughs> ethics comes as a result after you believe in something. They believed in the superiority of Nazism. Therefore, from ethical point of view, it was completely justifiable for them to kill Europeans themselves. So keep discussing ethics. Which ethics? The ethics of communism? Marx, Lenin, Stalin, to establish the previous USSR, United Soviet Social Republic, in our language now, Russia, they killed just 100 million persons. Mr. Mao Tse Tong in China, to establish with his party, Communist Party, they killed between 80 to 100 millions. Go and ask them, have you done something wrong? What's the answer? No, we are defending what? Communism. What is communism? Ideology, which means they believe in something. So when you tell me, just keep faith just for in your heart as a Muslim, <laughs> and don't let religious things to come between us, because we have to deal just on ethical base, the ethics of who? Who? This is a fake claim. This is a nonsense concept. It's just for, you know, the media consuming. It has no practical application. The last example. <clears throat> what happened in New Zealand? That criminal, the terrorists, one of his departure points was what? He is superior in his religion or his color. He justified to himself and he was so happy and so proud to have the machine gun and killed 50 Muslims with the very cold blood. Depending on what? Do you think he thinks he has done something wrong? No. <laughs> no. I'm giving you just historical, you know, facts about how faith motivates the people. So therefore, when we come, for example, as Muslims, the idea is not the hijab, the idea is not sisters, the idea Allah knows who the closest waits. Everyone on earth, including atheists, communists, Muslims, Jews, Christians, all of them, all of them, they have faith in something. Depending on what they believe, 
Next comes the motivation and what comes to the surface. So therefore, please don't be brainwashed and don't accept the concept of faith just in your heart. No, faith is not in your heart. Whether you liked or not, whether you classified yourself as a religious or non-religious, you believe in something. You, by the way, it's impossible to be a normal human being and you don't believe in something. It's impossible. It's impossible. When you see someone who's supporting the liberals, you come and ask him, what do you think about the conservatives or the what other party? They are such and such and such. This is what? Faith. He believes that this party is better. Maybe he's not using the terminology, but in reality he's what? He believes the Democrats better than uh, Republicans. He believes Republicans are better than Canada. Why do you decide, for example, not to use this application or that? Because you think, you believe they are spying on you. Why do you use Android or Apple or the other way around? Because you think, i.e., you believe this is better, more secure. This is faith. <laughs> but you, we don't use it in a religious context. But none of us, none of us, but he or she believes in something. Depending on that, the action will come. Building on that, when someone comes in to tell you, please, you know, I say please. In Islam, let's make it clear. In Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran al kareem which was revealed on the span of time of 23 years, contains more than 6,000 verses, 114 chapters, at least in 60 places of the Quran, you will read Amanu wa Amilu Salihat. Amanu wa Amilu Salihat. Wherever, whenever Allah talks about faith, those who believed immediately, it's connected with and did good deeds. Fa, in this connection, in your mind or in my mind, or on the tongue of whom that please don't mix. No, 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 no. If you don't mix, there is a problem in your understanding. Faith and good deeds are connected, whether you loved or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always did not say, I will accept your faith by your heart regardless of your deeds. No. Whatever you do, Quran, Iman, Amal Salih, Iman and good deeds, faith and good deeds, or otherwise, there's a big question mark that I'm not genuine or truth in mine. Imam al-Bukhari, radiallahu anhu, rahimahullah, he said, I've met 1,000 shaykh. The terminology of shaykh at the time of Bukhari, we are talking about the class of tabi'i, tabi'i, tabi'i. Yani just one or two steps from the sahaba, from the ulama. We are not talking about shaykh which means he might be 15 years old with some hair on his beard and he praised the Imam. No, 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 no. The terminology Shaykh means a great, great, great scholar of the time after the Sahaba. So Imam Bukhari, whom you know who is he, he says, I've met 1,000 Shaykh, i.e. great scholar, all of them. They were on the faith that when you say you are a faithful person, you believe, it means you say and you act. If there is no declaration and act, there is no faith. So don't waste your time. And the final one, now let's me, let me bring to you practically the simple common sense that all of us, believers and non-believers in our terminology, Okay, Muslims and non-Muslims, that we do not accept this in our practical daily life. That we don't detach faith from action. Why we accept it when it comes to the reason of Allah? Simple, quick examples. Is there any company you might working in it and they have rules? You genuinely love your company and you respect your company. However, you don't come on time, you don't fulfill your tasks, you don't reply to the telephone, and you don't achieve your task. But, wallahi, you love the company. Who cares? 
And by the way, GD1, you love it. Practice, practically, you don't ever, never attend on any country on earth except from you to declare your love, but you don't pay tax? Wallahi, I love my country. But I think it's my decision to decide whether shall I pay the tax or not. What do you think? Is there any democratic country will allow you immediately to the jail? You will be in prison. But uh, wallahi, I love. Who cares? If you love, pay the tax. Subhanallah. Sheikh, please don't mix. I know many people, they don't pray, but wallahi, they have a very white heart and they love Allah maybe better than you. We come to the shubha that we started the whole khutbah for. Yes, in theory it's possible, but as a rule, it's misconception. It's playing a dirty game by mixing the things. If you want to accept it, if you want to believe that if, uh, possibility, any non muhajjabi anyone who does not pray, anyone who drink the alcohol, he might be better than anyone who's doing his best to do it, you have to accept. You have to accept. Your son not to come at home on time, okay? Your daughter does not respect your commandments, but she loves you. Accept it and please close. That's it. Do you accept? It's impossible. Say, hey, respect the home. We will close the door, don't be late. Ya Ammi, Daddy, Wallahi, I love you. You are the best person for me. You are my royal model. But respect when I tell you, come early to home. Sorry, don't mix, Father. Don't mix. Who accepts this? It's impossible. <laughs> so let's put things in the right order. <clears throat> and the final example, just to fix it in your mind. Can you imagine that there is an army on earth will accept a soldier or an officer who is part of this army, that he loves the army, he respects the army, but he has no problem to cooperate with an enemy country. But he loves, wallah he loves. And wallah he has a faith, his country is the best. However, no problem with him because this is a personal choice. He decided to give the military secrets for an enemy country. Who accept that? Sheikh, don't mix action with faith. Faith is something and action is something. Who accept that? Who practically will allow 1,000% of these examples to be applied in his daily life? I believe if we are normal people, we have a normal IQ, none of us will accept that. Therefore, the question, why easily we accept to apply it on the religion of Allah? I say this, and I pray for you, and I pray for you, and I pray for you. Stop, Allah, stop, Allah. إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير Quick final message respected brothers and sisters one of the main reasons of خطبة الجمعة such as this one please it's to help you how to be proud of your religion it's to help you how to fix a very solid understanding for your, for your religion and to help others. Because what I've told you has been spread somehow indirectly with many people. And by the way, many of us, we do repeat this concept, but maybe in other definitions. But then, yeah, I mean, inshallah, don't judge. Sah, don't judge. Yeah, I mean, many times, many times we see, for example, they see munaqab, or or Someone in the did something good. They say, Subhanallah, Allah, I can't tell you. Maybe she's wearing the niqab. Allah knows what does she do in secretly against Allah. Which is true. There is a possibility. And in the مقابل, short skirt, body, full makeup. Allah knows. You don't know his heart. Now, as an individual specific case, yes, this is uh, reasonable. When you took it as a style of thinking, generalizing as a main idea in your life, you are as if you are making fun of Allah and Islam. 
You are destroying the common sense of a human being and religious thinking. So let's be careful. Let's re-put things in the right order inside ourselves, our relatives. Let's help them to understand things. And that's why we educate ourselves. Uh, before I make the dua, I want to tell you that uh, one of our brothers who pray with us, Zahullah Khair, his, uh, his brother-in-law passed away. His name is uh, Wa'il Qawas, originally from Palestine, from Qalqilia. He passed away in New Zealand. So his brother-in-law uh, here asked us, you know, it's part of what we can, we do pray the janazah. If you would like to pray with us the janazah, inshallah, so please, Salat al-Ghaib, when we finish the fard immediately, don't move, don't talk, just immediately we'll pray, inshallah, the janazah. The janazah is four rak'at. There is no ruku or sujood. You keep standing. We recite al-fatiha after the first takbira. Then we recite uh, as-salah al-ibrahimiya. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim ala Ibrahim after the second takbira. Then we say a specific dua. If you know it, say it. If you don't know it, Make dua for all believers and Muslims. Allahumma ghafir li hayyina wa mayyitina wa shahidina wa ghaibina wa kabirina wa saghirina wa dhakirina wa unthana. Allahumma ahyaytahu minna ala al-imam. Allahumma ahyaytahu minna fa ahyihi ala al-islam. Wa man amattahu minna fa amattu ala al-iman. Allahumma la tahribna ajrahum. Allahumma ghasilu bil ma'i wa thalji wal barad. If you know it, this is the dua. If you don't know it, make general dua for all believers. And the last one, after the last takbir, Allahumma la tahribna ajrahum wa la taftinna. بعدهم مغفر لنا ولهم then السلام عليكم السلام عليكم this is صلاة الجنازة وصلاة الغائب اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا اللهم ارحمنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم العرض عليك يا كريم سبحانك يا عظيم يا كريم لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر وأنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم إنا عبيدك أبناء وعبيدك أبناء وإيمائك نواصينا بيدك ماض فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاءك نسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وغمومنا يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة